bitterness. Bitterness is a seed of resentment in the heart. Seed of anger in the heart of man. Now when we are saying resentment, we mean the feeling of displeasure of some act, some remark. Feeling of displeasure against someone. Regarded as causing injury or insult. When we talk about bitterness, we are also talking about indignation. Strong displeasure at something considered unjust, offensive, insulting, or base. So bitterness is harboring a strong feeling of displeasure in the heart. Bitter people describe this feeling of displeasure as righteous anger. They feel justified harboring such resentment because in their subjective view, they have been offended. That is why they describe the feeling as righteous anger. The human being is a complex being. He is a triune being. The human being is a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. The spirit and the soul is sometimes referred to as the heart. This is the hidden man. The unseen nature of the man. Sometimes we also call it the inner being. So the inner man or the heart is the shaker and the mover of the body. The human being can be very deceiving. He or she is self-aware. Now what that means is that the human being is able to stand outside his or her actions. Like Judas. He approached Jesus with a kiss. But he never meant peace nor love. So very complex. Very deceiving. The man is kissing. But he means betrayer. So the human being is very complex being. And whatever he does on the outside is because of the condition on the inside. So you are a good person or a bad person depending on the state of your heart. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. That is why Jesus said this. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. It's not those who appear sanctimonious or walk with their hands at their back. No, but because he considered the heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In Matthew chapter 12, reading from 33 to 35. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers. How can you, who are evil, say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So, how can you, who are evil, speak anything good? How? He's querying the method. For the mouth speaks what is full in the heart. Sometimes the human being can speak. But he doesn't mean that in his heart. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. A good man. Brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. So we've been storing things in us. It is either good or evil. We store things consciously or unconsciously. As we travel on the road of life, we are storing things. We are picking some from our parents, some from friends schoolmates some from our readings what we've been viewing what we've been listening to all oh, these things as we do them we store things in our hands it's all about what you pay attention to it's about what you focus on all the five senses we have are gaze into the human heart most especially the eye gate and the ear gate our feeling can also draw something to the hand. What we taste can draw something into the hand. What we smell can draw something into our hand. All our five senses draw things into our hand. But especially the eye gate and the ear gate. 
This man went to minister to the blind. And then for the first time, he surprised some of the blind people. Yeah, because the title of his message uh, was Blessed are the Blind. And then he tried to let them know that they are escaping a lot of temptations because they don't see. It's going to make it easy for them to enter heaven. And those of us who have eyes, maybe one day he has to treat the topic, Blessed are the deaf. But it is true. The problems we have because we have eyes, is only God knows. Because the instruction in the Garden of Eden was simple. Don't touch this. And they saw what God said, don't touch. Then later on the Bible said, when the woman saw it, if she didn't have eyes, this would not have happened. Oh, blessed are those who do not have eyes. Proverbs 4 verse 20. So this is what wisdom is teaching the son. My son. Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Do not let them out of your sight what you see. Gaze on the way. Keep them within your hearts. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. That is the word. But if you take your eyes off and your ears off and you pay attention to other things, they will not be health to your body. Verse 23 says that above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So what you pay attention to will certainly draw certain things into your heart. So he says guard your heart. What that means is that be careful what you draw or store into the hand for everything you do flows from it the heart in fact is a workshop whatever gets in is produced whether good or bad what we dwell on in the inner man will give rise to our conduct what we dwell on in our heart will give rise to what we do whether good or evil matthew 15 verse 18 and 19 but the things that come out of a person's mouth comes from the heart and these defile them for out of the heart come evil thoughts see out of the heart comes what evil thoughts then the writer just brought some dash there so the evil thought in the heart is going to give birth to murder so if we dwell on revenge revenge and that is the thought in your heart you will kill if you entertain any sexual interest in your heart you will cause adultery sexual immorality if you contemplate on taking some money you will be a thief false testimony slander this comes from the heart. All because of what the evil that is stored in the heart and what the person is turning over in their thoughts. Bitterness is a malady of the heart. It's a deep-seated disease or disorder in the heart. So when we say you are bitter, we mean that spiritually or in the heart, there's a kind of a disease. It's a malady. It is deep-seated. We therefore need to guard the heart so that it does not contract this malady called bitterness. Let me go to this very important test so far as bitterness is concerned. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See, Matthew 5, 8 says, the Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And then this scripture is like Matthew 5, 8. This one is saying that make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defy many. See to it. What that means is that be careful. Be careful to guard your heart. So you don't fall short of the grace of God. Now, the falling short of the grace of God could be a difficult thing. Because the grace of God is very promiscuous. It, 
He said, it accepts everyone. What does that mean? When we say falling short of the grace of God. Hebrews 3 verse 12. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. See to it. Then he says, brothers and sisters, trying to let us all know that these ones belong to our fraternity. They are of the community of believers. That none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart. We used to. But why is, why, why is it that this Christian or these Christians are being warned not to be careful, not to have sinful or unbelieving heart? So if you don't see to it, it can happen to anyone. And he says that when that happens, you can turn away from the living God. This is what we mean when we say falling short of the grace of God. Not the grace of God giving you up, but you yourself. Because of the sinful, unbelieving heart, you are turning away from the living God. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. And that no bitter root grows up, grows up where? Grows up within the heart and cause trouble to the carrier of the bitterness and defile many people. So bitterness is like a viral disease. It is acquired. No one here on earth is born or was born bitter. It is acquired. It destroys the carrier and defiles many. What that means, it is infectious, tending to spread from one to another. Because this thing is like a viral disease. You should see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. That no bitter root grows up within your heart to cause trouble for you and to defile many. So when you are bitter about an elder, the bitterness will destroy you. But when this very person begins to go around visiting other people, he will start talking about the elder, that he is this, he is that. By the time he leaves this other elder, he has infected the elder with the COVID bitterness. <laughs> Bitter people. They are dangerous people. They destroy the church first class. They do that with some kind of impunity. Bitter people describe this feeling of displeasure as righteous anger. They feel justified harboring such resentment because in their view, they have been offended. One man said, I just saw the permission. <laughs> and another woman said, ah, this man, unless we are called, nobody will call you. <laughs> you see, they are joking with danger. It is dangerous to hold on to bitterness because it is a disease. It is a disorder and it has devastating consequences. So don't wait till someone comes to beg you. You are destroying your own spirit and your own self. So let us look at the devastating effects of bitterness. Bitterness destroys. It destroys, like we have said, the individual career. The individual career. It destroys relationships like family, like marriages, like friendship. Bitterness destroys organizations and institutions. Bitterness destroys churches. It destroys nations. It destroys many things. It is a destroyer. The stand of destroying nations. Some people are with arms because of bitterness. Some by this time are going to kill because of bitterness. How do I know that I am bitter? So let's look at the symptoms of bitterness. Like anger. And people are bitter on the inside. Mostly, they express it in anger. Then anger too has a brother called hatred. Unforgiving spirits. They keep records of evil. Now, any little thing you do to a bitter person, they will record it. I was going to solve a matter between two young pastors. When we were going, I thought that I was just going to exhort them so that we can keep on going on worshiping our God. So the, I asked this one to tell me his side of the story. He did that briefly. 
and then I ask this other person to come in. So this one reached out for the diary. Then he opened it. On the... <laughs> when he gave the date, I realized that <laughs> I was in trouble because I went there alone. I thought I was just going to just talk, talk them out of this. I realized, oh, I came here alone. I should have brought some other people. Because once he has brought his notes and he has, record, he has kept records of evil, we are going to spend time. It's going to be a big case. But when he was talking, I was looking at his face and I was worried the kind of heart he has. Those faces are different from their hearts. And you must keep this in your mind. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. They find it difficult calling the perceived offender by name, the right name. Now they can use terms like Wujaf. They can never mention your name. They wouldn't mention your name. Not if I mean, if someone is bitter at me, instead of calling me Eric Nyamicha, I say Wujaf. <laughs> Now, you can, I mean, I'm sure you are aware of Joseph's brother. When they saw their own brother coming, he said, that is the dreamer. See, bitterness causes pain and, uh, and anguish. Yeah, it inflicts with distress, pain, and suffering. You see, the one who is bitter, he goes through some pain and suffering. They are malicious talkers. Sometimes it can cause insomnia, sleepless nights. Some also quell into their shells. Now they don't open up any longer. Now when you greet them, they respond with their head. They shy away from people and they like. Some too have suicidal tendencies. Others are talkatives. They are talkative depending on the gender and the temperament. Especially the women, they will want to talk. Some of the men too will talk depending on their temperament. But normally when men are bitter, they will be quiet. They want to tell their side of the story nicely, but they are malicious talkers. Bitter people rejoice in evil. So when you see that you are rejoicing in the evil that is happening to the perceived offender, what that means is that you are bitter. Now bitterness eats away joy in relationships like marriage. Bitter people can be very, very callous. They are insensitive and indifferent. They are unsympathetic. When they are bitter, they are unsympathetic. When you die, when they are, sometimes they see uh, an enemy's corpse and they stand by the corpse and insult the corpse. Oh, we know we will be, oh. The man is dead, but he's so bitter that he wants to kill the corpse again. They inflict injury with their tongue because bitter people, they have poisonous mouth. They are prone to insults. And then when they insult you, it is very painful. Because they will tell you just as the thing is. Normally, they will look at you. And sometimes they can even insult people with the kind of sickness they are aware that the people have. They are rebellious. They are revengeful. You see them saying it. I will revenge. And they bear grudge. Medically, it can lead to all forms of complications. I read the book and this man was blind because of bitterness. It enlarges people's hearts. It causes insanity to some people. Others contract ulcers, high blood pressure and all that. These are some symptoms of bitterness. Bitterness is not good. Don't have but the seed of resentment. And justify yourself that I'm right so I'm able, I, I have to hold on to this anger and say that it's righteous anger. Because I have been offended, it will destroy you. Be a person that when God looks on your inside, God will be pleased. So when you lift up your hands in praise, the Lord should be pleased with you. It should never be said in heaven concerning you that this fellow worships me with his, their lips but their heart is far away because of bitterness. Let go all forms of bitterness. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. What you dwell on will cause your conduct. What is bitterness doing against your marriage? I want us to rise in prayer. Shall we pray now?